Okay, so next up on the show, we have got Sam. Sam goes by the name of Just Breathe. He is an amazing producer. He's done two remixes for us that are featured on this 50th release album. The first remix is by the classic Trace track, The Time Is Now, obviously one of the very first releases on Dirtbox. And more recently, he's remixed the track Ellie by myself, uh, a big liquid one that you saw on the Vibe City album last year and also on one of our City singles. Sam, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. No worries at all. Pleasure to be here. Great to finally virtually meet you, I suppose. So uh, yeah. where where do you call home, Sam? Where are you uh, Where are you talking to us from? So um, I'm based in Guildford in Surrey, but I've sort of lived around in London and all that sort of stuff. But at the moment, I'm down these ways. Ah, right. OK. Guildford, quite a quite a hub for drum and bass people down there, isn't it? Like we say, you know, we've got Dan well, Trace, who we just spoke about. Well, it's, it's weird. It's sort of because I know um, I think it's Nick who he, he's a uh, sub focus. He um, he's from around here. But for the longest time, there was sort of not a lot. And then suddenly over the last um, sort of, I guess, 10, 15 years, especially with uh, things like Kane FM coming about and doing their bits and pieces and then making it into an official radio show and stuff like that, there seemed to have been a bunch more uh, producers just um, sort of looking at drum bass going, yeah, that sounds fantastic, and then just sort of cramming it all into one. There's um, a club down the road from here um called 33 hertz which has been really hammering home really big uh drum and bass bookings for the last uh, few years as well so it's i mean it's as well as becoming more prevalent anyway in the last uh 10 years or so it's getting more and more in 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 the limelight over here which is really really good yeah i i mean i, I know quite a few of the producers and dj they obviously 30 years i believe another guy who features on this album uh harry lynch harry sigmus he does a few yeah, we, we there, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you all you all know each other but yeah i mean what i was going out with that is like obviously you expect a lot of people into drum and bass from bristol birmingham london it's it's the given yeah but you know when when you say guildford to somebody you wouldn't expect so many like names and producers i mean obviously no, octave and things yeah. like that come from there as well we were speaking to Stonks earlier, who's got a remix on the album. He lives up in Newcastle, and there's quite a few producers from up there as well, funnily enough. So, uh, mm. yeah, it's good good to hear. So how, how long's your drum and bass history go back for then? How long have you been into it? Ooh. Well, I, I was just going to qu quickly, yeah, before that, um, I saw this DJ Zink interview a couple of days ago, and he was, he was echoing your thoughts on that. Um, like, drum and bass, as, as well as being a recognised, just it's just another form of music now. Um, and it has been for quite a while, which is really nice. It's now lo no longer just that weird thing coming out of Bristol. And it's just, oh, you know, you know, house, drum, bass, rock, country, whatever. It's just normal now, which is quite nice. Um, so in terms of, I guess, drum, bass history, I start when I started properly playing out, um, I was 17 and I was realistically too young to be playing in the clubs I was playing in. But... Um, yeah, we ended up, uh, me and another guy, we did like a, a DJ duo at that time playing drum and bass and stuff. We did festivals and what have you. And um, I think the first night we ever did was supporting, oh God, uh, DJ Fresh. And we had Serial Killers, Red Light and um, Shy Effects was there as well. So that was sort of like the first big sort of decent night, size night you're going to ever yeah. play. So, right, there you go. Here's, there's a the lineup. And you go, oh, fucking hell, all right. That's and, a cracking uh, lineup. Yeah, it was awesome, um, and we, we did a bunch more and stuff. But in terms of production, um, I guess I sort of started slow and then did bits here and there and sent things off, and I think some things got released for free various places. But, um, I mean, to be honest, my sort of music production career took a really big turn into doing um, film music for feature films and things like that. And then I have sort of started to come back to kind of house and things like that over the years and I'm taking a bit more of a, a, a massive turn into drum and bass because I've got to that point where I'm thinking you know what it's really fun let's start making it again it's been a while um and I just enjoy it really do you do any other uh, styles of music as well I'm, I'm sure you've told me that there's other genres that you do dabble in yes I mean I've had uh, a few kind of 
housey related releases over the years um had some stuff out via we scream records and bits like that um by some guys I, I used to work alongside with when i was uh working as a photographer at places like xo wire and things like that um and, and the nest and that sort of thing um but in terms in terms of that sort of stuff i mean mainly it's been sort of housey bits then there's a few releases on red alpha records um a few years back there's some kind of liquidy things there's some other stuff that's a bit sort of like if you crossed original sin sub focus that sort of sound um and the majority of it has in terms of actually putting music out there has been a lot more i guess cinematic um lots of feature films lots of kind of weirdly enough horror films and stuff like that so it sort of that really pushes uh, the envelope in terms of sound design and you can work that into your um, electronic productions as well, which is quite nice. Um, so it means I've got a lot faster with um, sort of fiddling with synths, which is kind of handy. But yeah, um, in terms of genres, just big bunch, big mix. Well, you mentioned as well um, photography. Obviously, you go on your Instagram and your profiles. There is a mixture of music and photography. So this is obviously your second love as well. Is is this something you're doing as a day job? And do you love it just as much? Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, I mean, so I I kind of started doing photography just for a bit of extra money on the side when um, I was doing various bits and pieces. And then it sort of kind of got out of control. And I ended up um, having residencies at multiple clubs across London. I'm sure you've heard similar stories before about, oh, I just started doing this one day and then I, I don't really know how I'm here doing this. But um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it was um, it was a full time freelance thing for many years. And I mean, we're talking clubs like uh, The Nest, X or Y, Ministry Fabric and um, Studio 338, all them lot, uh, as well as, you know, your, your smaller bits and pieces. Uh, but that was, you know, the, the bread and butter stuff. Um, and then sort of you know 2020 happened and i probably don't need to delve into that more than already has been um but i i've started doing it more um on the side freelance instead of having it as sort of my main my main earner these days uh, but yeah it, there's been a lot of uh club work loads of festivals and the bits and pieces surrounding that but um i would say my favorite place to to work as a photographer would have been this club in dalston called the nest um, I know the so, yeah. yeah i mean it's a, it's a real shame it doesn't exist anymore but um for anyone watching this who, who doesn't know what it is it was a very sort of long thin um like quite small club uh underground in dawson it's bar along one side and then there's a, a tiny amount of seating across the other side for oh, look we have some seating uh but at the other end there was a, this incredible martin sound system and basically no lights at all and you get some of the most ridiculously brilliant DJs coming through there because it was, you know, it was a very intimate sort of high energy sweat box. And um, I never got to play there, which was um, really unfortunate. But working as a photographer there, I mean, you learned quick because the only lights in there at one point were one teeny tiny laser and the screens from the CDJs. And you go, OK. How am I working with no light? Okay, fine. <laughs> um, so you learn fast. So a lot of drum and bass people, that is heaven though, isn't it? That's what they oh, like. Get, you know, you hear a lot of people, let's get back to the dark clubs and things yeah. like that as well. Yeah, it was brilliant. We had a spore in one night and that tore the fucking roof off the place. Like you knew it was a good night in there when it was so hot in there that it started raining with no water. <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> and you're like, oh, Sweat here we go. All that. Ah, we we used ah. to go to an event at the sanctuary in Milton Keynes and the upstairs yeah. room, which was like techno art trance and things like that. That yeah. was called the sweat box that everybody nicknamed it the sweat box. And it's just that. But great, yeah. great atmosphere if uh, <laughs> if you're really enjoying it as well. Yeah. So let, let's jump into these remixes then, Sam. So we're going to yeah. start by um, the Time Is Now remix. This uh, this came about obviously a couple of years ago from your connection with Dan, which obviously brought on my connection with you as well. So before we listen to the track, how how do you know Dan traced and how did you uh, end up getting this remix with him? Oh God, it's like it's like anybody else. I I sorry, Dan, if you're watching this, I honestly can't remember. It's probably one of those things that goes back years and years to the point where you just go, oh yeah, it's just Dan. How do you know each other? Ah, no idea. Not not important. Irrelevant. Um, 
But I mean, I, I think it, it must have been something to do with either Kane FM or sort of working clubs around Guildford area or London or so, some mishmash of all of it. Um, but I'm very ashamed to say, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> but I, I remember how the remix came about because um, uh, I was shooting this event up at Ministry and there was a there was a break between sessions because there were day sessions. And it was me, uh, Danny Wiley, this really really good techno dj who if you haven't looked up you definitely definitely should uh really high energy and she's lovely as well and uh woody cook uh fat boy slim's son we were just hanging around just playing some tracks and just uh killing time between sessions and um then i said hang on a minute i've never i've done something new as just like a fun thing i want to test it on the ministry system chucked in this little uh, remix competition entry had done for Stomp by Sub Focus when that was happening at the time. And then Woody started going going off on it and just having loads of fun with it. I thought, okay, I mean, I kind of have to film this, which is something I never do because I'm not one of those people who goes, oh, you no camera phone with everything. But <laughs> it was it was hilarious because he was like doing that. It's like he was playing garage, like shagging the decks. Um, it was really funny. And then I think I put that up somewhere and I think then I got talking to either you or Dan or something. Um, how did you feel about doing something a little bit like that? Because we really like the sound of that on on uh, one of these tracks. And I went, yeah, absolutely. And then that sort of um, jumped out there. And then I think I out of the blue messaged you saying, I really like the vocal on Ellie. Can I have a go on it? And you went, yeah, fine, here's the stems. The, although the weird thing, uh, the, the part of the vocal I really liked I forgot about when I was selecting the files. I went, oh, this is good. And I kind of got carried away with other bits and pieces. Only after I'd finished the track, I came back and went, oh, damn it. The, the one bit I really liked, I didn't actually use. I completely missed, missed it and forgot about it. Uh, <laughs> so I might have to do something with that at some point as well. Uh, maybe a second VIP. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, Brilliant. Version 48.5. Well, hold five. your horses on the early track. Yeah. What we're going to do right now, Sam, is going to listen to uh, the Time Is Now remix. So check it out. This is the Just Breathe remix. I've traced the Time Is Now. The place is here.
so there we go absolutely fantastic track from sam just breathe this one's got a bit of a sub focus vibe to it hasn't it sam it really took me by yeah. surprise when you did this remix well i mean I, th I remember i remember us talking about some sort of like sub focus dimension -y type feel to it and i thought no worries i'll crack out the uh like the mini moog sort of stabby bass sound and then you know as i'm working through it and getting the groove going with drums i just sort of add a little sort of i think it was like a squarey sort of lead in and i went yeah all right and just sort of carried on um you know it's like when you're sort of in that production zone and you're going yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's really good and then you you know it takes it in a different place to uh what you thought it was going to be a so, bit more dance floor than what i was going for but hey if it works no it definitely works i mean andy c played it so you can't really complain at that and uh, yeah. yeah i mean i mean for me i played it on my us tour as well when i was touring the usa nice. and it, was, it was one of i mean uh, there's two tracks that stand out from that tour another one is um uh bring the fire by varkid but this remix Ooh, as well wow. was one of the two biggest tracks of the tour definitely it's, it's got that american flavor i feel that they like over there yeah. it really did, all, did really well over there as well, well you that, while we're on it that track bring the fire check that one out that is awesome I Re it. really really underrated it's really really good it's definitely underrated it's, it's probably one of my favorite tracks of that year and um another remix we've actually have done on this lp as well so there's a big nasty remix by besker of that more of that later in the episode um but let's go on to the next track the next track is obviously your remix of ellie a track by me now this track was uh, made by myself uh, again just after lockdown and it was a tribute to my daughter i was very uh, obviously all loved up and new dad you know new dad what? and all that and uh, <laughs> decided to obviously get the vocal and it, it reminisced a lot about how i feel about my daughter so yeah, yeah that's what happened with ellie and uh, again it's it's one that really caught your ear isn't it sam to do a remix yeah i mean it was it was very much a case of um I, I think you posted a clip of it up somewhere or something um and i think i reached out going oh well, hang on what's that vocal um and there's this sort of really light long uh sort of airy thing on it and which is weird because i actually forgot to use that in the end um i kind of got excited with all the other parts of the track and went oh this one this one this one and then came back to it later and went oh right yeah didn't do that one um might have to do something else with it at some point but um yeah so i remember hearing this sort of airy vocal and thinking oh i could really do something with that and sort of warp it and push and pull it and whatever ended up not actually doing that at all um but uh used other bits from the track and um as i was playing around with it uh trying to find which was sort of the better root note to use i ended up coming up with this almost like dillinger type style bass thing that sort of went in a way that i didn't really think was going to work beforehand and i went oh, no, no. yeah yeah okay that works and just sort of ran with it and um then i i did a little bit of like an old like uh ram style vocal trailing thing on it and stuff and uh, yeah i mean the idea behind it is um i guess sort of take it back to a little bit more of that kind of like just rolling rhythms and then someone just drops in something randomly out of nowhere and it sends the whole dance floor like or at least that's what i hope it's going to be <laughs> well let's have a listen to it this is the just breathe remix of leo hf ellie
there you go. Another fantastic remix by Just Breathe. Let us know what you think in the comments. Is this one a banger? You know, let us know. It's coming out very soon, April the 5th on the album. And of course, it'll be our March 25th on our sampler EP as well. So this was, again, not what I expected, Sam, when I heard this remix. But again, blew me away. Lots of old school sounds in there. Bit, bit of jungle, bit of rollers. It's got a bit of everything, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I tend to... You know, when you have a template of what everyone else is doing at the time, I tend to look at that and go, yeah, let's just do a, a, mish, a mash of stuff. Um, and especially when I'm doing something that's sort of, I guess, more kind of future soundy or more kind of sounds like a classic, I like to sort of mit, like combine both a little bit uh, just so you get, you know, more flavours inside one little bit of audio. I think that's just more fun to do, really. Yeah, absolutely absolutely well you've smashed it with these two remixes I, I could not be happier um i'm obviously waiting on the just brief single for dirt box obviously no you know we've done the remixes now let's get something original from you let's get it out there yeah. and uh, see what we can do in the future talking of which 2024 what's that look like for you musically photography what's happening this year for you sam um, at the moment, I'm in that sort of horrible production stages where I've got a thousand tracks that I haven't finished. I'm looking back at them going, ooh, there's something really something there. And honestly, not much else to report. I might kind of come out with something one weekend and go, oh, I managed to do this. This is really cool. There you go. Or I might forget about it and just have chips in bed. Who knows? Have you thought about collaborating? Are you uh, getting some out there to do a collaboration? yeah um so if you got half finished I mean, tracks mate just send them my way i've got a ton of in-house artists we could why don't we get you collaborating with varkid who did bring the fire i'll tell you what i might have something that he can mess around with that could really work there we go there you go you heard it here first okay just breathe and varkid collaboration could be in the works i like the sound of this this has turned into a very very uh very lucrative <laughs> interview i can tell <laughs> brilliant stuff <laughs> well let's, we'll talk more about that a little bit later for now yeah tell me your thoughts on the 50th release on dirtbox it's been the fifth year that we've been running you're a part of that and you've got two remixes on this lp what does that mean to you sam well i mean first first of all it's it's a bit of an honor to have not one but two tracks on there uh which is something I, I wasn't really expecting so I'm, I'm very very happy with that um but the the output from dirtbox has been really 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 cool um to the point where i started talking to various people about um oh i just had a new track out and they went oh what's it on oh it's uh on dirtbox um remix uh, by a guy called trace and a bunch of people were turning around to me going wow you've done a remix of trace and i was yeah it's, i mean to me it's just danny lives down the road pretty much um <laughs> but uh yeah to a lot of people it's i mean I've probably just had my head under a rock um but it's it's a much uh bigger deal than i think i've, I've realized of what the hell have i got myself into um but yeah the output from dirtbox that i've been seeing is really 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 good and all these weird kind of just like dance floor slammers just coming out of nowhere like, i mean we were talking about that vodka track earlier um i think i did a little mini mix a little while ago um for the, the times now release and i think i've yeah. uh chucked that in with an old adam f track and that one really jumped out and there's a few others here and there there was a i can't remember the uh the artist name or the track name really sorry but there was a a purple piece of artwork with this sort of really aggressive um almost like a face style track on it i thought that was brilliant um was it sequential sequential Maybe. i think that was a purple bit of artwork he's now known as resurgence so he's changed his name on it i think that okay. may be i'm just trying to think back to purple artwork but i think that possibly could yeah. be it possibly, there's like possibly. two guys and then the sort of turquoise and purple and the two guys are all standing up and looking forward i might be remembering this completely incorrectly but that one <laughs> also really stood out and to be fair the output across the board has been really really good and i feel uh really honored to be a part of that and to have two tracks on on this big release it's really 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 good that it's been great working with you as well so i love when you you're doing music with like i say you totally take me by surprise whenever i hear the tracks <laughs> that you're sending across i mean for me i mean yeah we, we've got a big output and and it's definitely not quantity over quality and one of the main reasons we do have a high output on the label 
is because we cover all subgenres. I'm just a lover of drum and bass. You know, I, I like Neurofunk, I like Liquid, I like Rollers, I like Jungle, I like it all. And obviously, when you're covering such a vast amount of music, then you get a lot of music, obviously, across. So it's put me in the capable situation of being able to release quite regular and, you know, having a nice brand like that that, that can be consistent and relied upon. And bringing new talent through as, as well, you know, one thing that I do like about our label is if you release with us, you don't have to wait, you know, 12, 18 months to get a release for the majority of time. Some have yeah. waited that long, by the way, but for the majority of people, it's not always like that. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for your track, Sam. These are absolutely blowing it out of the water. Like I said, the, uh, the Trace remix has done the biz and I'm sure the Ellie remix will as well. Ellie remix is on the sampler four that's coming out March 29th and also on the great 50th release album on April the 5th. Sam, thank you very much for your time. No worries at all. What's up everyone. Lee UHF here, the host of Yo D and B raps. Thank you for watching our videos. If you like what you're hearing and seeing on the channel, please make sure you subscribe into it. Please make sure you thumbs up the videos and more importantly, let's get some comments going as well. It really helps the channel and in order for us to provide this content to you, we do need the channel to grow. So we can't do this without your help. Hope you enjoy the video. Speak to you soon.